Welcome back to another episode of Brick Separators. What is this, episode six? I believe so it is, yep. Holy crap, a half a year of Brick Separators. Can you believe that? We didn't miss one. We were close, but we didn't miss one. <laughs> still going. Yeah, even at a month, you know, doing these things a month apart, it still seems it comes up pretty quickly, you know? It's like, yep, it's, yep. It's crazy. <laughs> Speaking of coming up pretty quickly, what do you got coming up pretty quickly? Well, Brick World, oh man. So I got a I got an email about six days ago um, offering Brick World Indianapolis, which I was already scheduled for Michigan and uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mm-hmm. And so now there was there was a two week gap between those. Now we're doing three in a row. So in Brick World Indianapolis is extremely difficult to get into, almost as hard as Chicago. Um, not guaranteed the next show, but they said that somebody dropped out, and I got into that. And we're going to be three straight weekends. Uh, starting September 25th and 26th in, in Detroit there, in no- Novi, Michigan, um, yeah. for that one. And then the next week in Indianapolis, the next week in Fort Wayne. So whew, I'm, I'm, it's a challenge. I'm going to be challenged to get bring enough stuff for all that, but we're going to do it. I think, I think the last time I went to the uh, Novi one, which was uh, right before you went for the first time, uh, there was a gun show going on at the same time, <laughs> yeah. right next door at the same same hall. And yep. I think you said it happened last time. So yep. hey, if you if you're into guns, <laughs> well, you can go go to that one and like get your bricks and get your guns all at the same time. So there yep. you go, guns. <laughs> Let's have a kids event with a gun event. That's, that's, yeah. Um, and how was your time it. off? Um, uh, that well, time month off. <laughs> well, I've documented it all on my blog so you know so yeah, it's yeah. like it's all there except for that one week when i went down to tennessee which uh me and my uh like i said i, I agreed to my wife to take her down to uh, gatlinburg tennessee um they uh she was going down for her work event um all the she sells uh sensi which is like these wax uh, wax bars that you put in warmers and stuff and um you know it's a replenishable thing so like people are always buying it and different scents and that and so they had their like yearly conference and it was all virtual this year again but the uh the girls on the team they all got they rented a house and got together and i said hey i'll she was looking for ways to get down there and flights were way too expensive and we weren't really comfortable so i said i'd drive her down there and then go camping <laughs> <laughs> camping lasted two days and then i'm like you know I'm, I'm gonna go i wound up staying at the house uh for the rest of the week but gatlinburg i did not realize i thought it was like out in the woods it would be it would be fun yeah. it was out in the mountain no it's a tourist trap it's it's <laughs> Ripley's believe it or not there's like all sorts of, you go down the main strip and it's just like it's like you know COVID haven right there it's, yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's just horrible so I just stayed in the house Thanks. um yeah. she had fun I I rested I did a lot of thinking about like the next four weeks uh which was um I wanted to you know I had off of of my day job and i wanted to run the store as a full-time person and i think that's what we're going to talk about today is is like my experience doing that was very eye-opening right like you know i we we all watch you do it and you see you make it seem effortless on on your blog and i was like yeah why didn't you do that sooner um the amount of work you were doing before you went full-time like before your job and then I don't know, after your job or during right. your job <laughs> is, you know, very like, I, I appreciate that a lot more now uh, watching that. But like, while I was on, on the vacation, I was like, okay, how am I going to run this? I started thinking about like, what are the, the goals? Because I think you really need goals to do full times. Yeah. So you see that in my blog, I set some daily goals and I still reference it. Like even, even in the video that's going to come out tomorrow, like I, I referenced the, the goals, right? Even though I'm not working towards those now because I went back to my job those goals were the drive for me and uh it affected a lot of a lot of my thought process on how I run that and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit um you've been doing full-time since episode two when I had that countdown right to the exact yeah. moment you uh <laughs> you, you went we full-time it, we recorded that one on the last day the last I was actually yeah the end of it that was really cool <laughs> i like the fact that you were like being paid for the last five minutes from your old <laughs> job and then you switched over right during the call um, yeah that was awesome <laughs> initial thoughts there with you know like uh now that you've been full-time um for yeah five months. like 
like I hear that a lot, like, you know, effortless, it's not effortless. Obviously there's a lot, a lot involved. And I was working a lot more doing two jobs and that's what was broke. The, I guess, broke the camel's back. I needed to stop working so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean this doing the Bricklink store and thing and, and stuff like that. Selling Lego is probably three times more, um, work and effort than my other job was you know so it's not like i i I did this to make it easier um right i mean financially it should be you know in theory after a while but you know so it's like like you said it is a lot more work i knew that because i i got the three months last last year last summer my job offered me to voluntarily leave for three months and i did it yeah and and we survived on it we you know we weren't you know, I, I got no like unemployment or anything. It was just voluntary. So it was just what I was making. And it was, it was a little bit of a struggle, but I, you know, it just, it's just learning It's a trial and error thing that we learned from that. Um, you know, and, and that's why, you know, I, I originally planned to work this whole year, 2021, but you know, things just, uh, I just felt from that, from that trial I did last summer, I'm like, no, we can definitely do it. We know we can do it just like at the level I wanted it to have my family, like not for me, not feeling pressure. I have to work all the time and my family have the time with the family and not having them be like, you know, where's dad going Yeah, (laughs) after work, you know? So you you gotta have the, a budget, you gotta have restraints and specific times for things. And, and, you know, I haven't worked a Sunday in many, many years, at least two years now. So that's always been there, but um, yeah. You just got to figure it out. Um, it, you know, it's not a, it's not an instant thing as, as you can see my process uh, through my vlogs, how I documented right. all that. It's mm-hmm. not instant. You can't just decide I'm just going to sell Lego for a living. It's not that easy for sure. Not that easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I struggled a lot with, um, with, uh, work-life balance, right? Like I wanted to just like work right. all the time. Right. I, uh, <laughs> you, you're a morning person. I think that's a product of yeah. your, your old job. So like you're getting up at like four or five o'clock in the morning back then. Five. I'm, I'm up at five and I'm down here. At oh, five you're, after five. you're sleeping in now. I see. Okay. No, I, I, no, I, I, I don't think <laughs> I got up at four, maybe once or twice while I was working my day job, but five is when I get up and I'm down here within five minutes. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That, that's crazy. I, I'm a night owl. So like, you know, like I've been trying, like for me, it's more beneficial to get up earlier and, and work in the morning while nobody's awake. Yeah. Um, but it was, it's, it's still a struggle to get like, even, I mean, we're recording this at 1130. I got up at 1040. <laughs> I, mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just got up uh, to, to, to record this. So like, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, we didn't go to bed till like two, two thirty. It's like, you know, it's just, it's just how it is. Right. Like, yeah. But um, I get, I'm more productive in the morning though. So like, I've been trying to like, get up earlier so that I can work more in the morning. Cause by nighttime, I'm like that I'm beat, right? Like I don't want to go downstairs and, and work that. So that, that was a struggle I tried to do. And I think you saw that in my blogs, like I think eight 30 was like the, the earliest I ever got up. You know, I was right. set, setting my alarm for seven and yeah, it was like eight 30. I was down there. It was crazy. So like th- that, you know, trying to set your own times, uh, what works for you, when are you most, uh, productive you know you got to keep that in mind um i you know one thing that's that was different from your experience for last year from mine is like i got paid for them for my yeah right right so like right that's different yeah i i didn't i i didn't have the constraints of like hey i i don't you know i gotta budget this much because i gotta live off of that right like i never i never had that sort of feeling so that's another mindset for me that i haven't experienced yet right like i was just like yeah i'll spend it all i'll invest in the store this month and hopefully it'll pay off you know um in the fall or whatever yeah well one thing about seeing you go to bed so late i mean we rarely watch tv around here i don't play video games so that's a lifestyle it is a dedication that i have that is it's just all in to, to this basically and you know and to my my family you know so that's what I spend my free time just hanging out with them. Yeah. Um, mentally, yeah, was, I'm, I'm locked down here, though, all the time. Mentally, it's, it's tough to get that out of your mind. <laughs> so I think the first thing that I experienced when I, uh, when I started uh, was how long it was taking me. And I, like, it never really sort of affected me before because like, I knew I was going to do like a bag or two a day 
you know, put it away and then come back another day, you know, and that I had my part out in a way so that I could do that. Um, and it wasn't going to affect anything else. Right. But so the first time I did a part out, I did it that way. And it took me 12 hours. And I think I was talking about this last time on, yep. on brick separators. And the first thing that came to mind was like, I got to do this faster, right? Like it's got to be done faster. And so, uh, you know, that was, that was the first step. The second step was like, it's so, it's so funny. Cause like, I see this on everybody's vlogs now, like they're all talking about it, um, is <laughs> pulling orders faster and like, right. What, what's your target, you know? And I, I came up with some like three, three lots per minute based on something you said in one of your vlogs. And, um, you tried to calculate it afterwards in a yeah. formula that I made a whole montage about. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough. Like, what what what's the right goal? What's the the right thing? It's funny now that I'm not full time anymore. I'm back to like slow poking it around because I've got nothing else after it, right? Like, the only thing after pulling my orders is going to work. And so, like, yeah, I'm, I'm just poking around, watching YouTube videos, pulling my orders slowly. And it's like, yeah, it's it's crazy the mindset difference in mindset between full time and and uh, part time. I don't know if I ever had that mindset. I, well. Once I realized that I was going to do this full time, my mindset completely changed. And it was ra- like, I was always, so I always say racing toward the end or racing toward a goal. Cause that's what I felt like every day, trying to do everything fast as I could yeah. um, upload as fast as I could. Cause I knew at some point it was going to, I was going to get that break of not having to work two jobs. So it's, you got to have the goal. I mean, that's, that's what I have in my notes, have goal, have a vision. Yeah. You know, for, I mean, like, and we talked about this before expansion, like every time I'm done with one expansion, I, I, I visualize where the next one's going. I have to find out where it's going to go. And now, you know, right now it's visualizing building a building <laughs> Yeah, um, where I can easily have employees, you know, hopefully two, two full-time or part-time employees at some point, maybe the kids want to do it in, in 10 years. I don't know. Um, so that is, that's a I'm big vision. You- I'm surprised you got like your son interested in it and his friend helping you out. Like, yeah, I mean, my, my yeah. kids, they're like forced to do it. Like my one, my oldest son, <laughs> yeah. he's forced to do it because he's, he needs the money. <laughs> right. Well, that, that's how we do it. We don't, we don't really give them allowance. And if they want something, we, you know, we provide everything for them, but if they want something of their own, like my, my middle son wants a airsoft gun now. <laughs> so. Oh. He's been working this week and he's, he's got, he made half the money for it uh, this week. So he'll get it next week. I'm sure. But yeah, it's a motivation, but they don't, they're not so motivated. It's just the money. <laughs> Somebody made a comment, like when I was showing how fast I could pull orders and I was timing them and calculating off camera, no math on the camera anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about accuracy. Like they they said, I, I'd rather have accurate be at more accurate than speed. I'm like, then that is true. Um, because in this, you know, you want to, you know, you're providing an experience for somebody when they buy your, your parts for BrickLink, they, they need it for a certain project most likely. And mm-hmm. they, you know, they expect to get everything. And that is, that's definitely the case. You got to keep that mindset. And, you know, I mess up on orders a couple of times a week, you know, I just don't put the right quantity and I, and my, you know, I just, okay, I'll send it out to you unless they request a refund for it. I have no problem doing that, but I always send it out. Um, you know, uh, but accuracy is something you just got to keep in mind, <laughs> find yeah. ways to help you be more accurate. You know, with me, I did try to slow down more and, uh, you know, just to, I don't use the check boxes. I find that as a waste of my time and I don't always use them unless I, unless I got to get into the mode of using them. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, my process is looking at the part I just pulled and go down to the next one. And sometimes the parts are very similar in that row and that's where I mess up sometimes, but it's rare. Um, but yeah, being accurate is, is important for sure. Yeah. I, you know, one of the things that um, I've really, since coming back from vacation, uh, really started putting more time and effort into eBay. Um, right. You know, putting, putting more minifigures there. And that actually, at the beginning, was very time consuming. Um, you know, I, I had a, a sort of stockpile, like a little bit like what you have in the back there. And, you know, I, I found it wasn't organized the greatest and it was taking a lot of time there. So I had to switch that up. Uh, but that, that still takes quite a bit of time to like 
there's a goal around that, right? Like I'm trying to list five minifigures a day. And so that doesn't sound like a lot, but like when you've got to create, you know, create these and you have to place the orders to make sure you have the parts on hand. And then you, you know, um, which, which minifigures are good to sell there. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of buying. There's a lot of, um, organization creation yep. there. Um, you know, creating those little cards, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was uh, organizing it all through wanted lists at, at the beginning, and that I I knew as soon as I started that I'm like this <laughs> yeah. this isn't gonna scale, you know, and it I, <laughs> it fell a lot of this. It, it fell apart. Well, it didn't really fall apart, but it like really became too time consuming and too hard to manage around 50, 60 minifigures. Yeah. And so and so now like I'm glad I started with these cards. Um, that you, I know they're so you know, great. I just ripped that idea that you had off, but now that yeah. is like, that's my, that's my system, right? Like I didn't have that as the system before it was all one list, but now it's like, I pull up the number, I figure out what the parts are. And then I, I also write the accessories on the back now. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's a good so idea. I don't, so I don't have to go look it up. Um, being that, like, I just started that it's, that that big of a deal to write it down. So, yeah. And you even organize your cards in your book by like, which ones are, you know, I'm sold kind of I'm, maybe I'm, I'm not even using the book anymore. Now, now okay. that I've switched over to the cards, the cards are always either they're either in one box or the other because of, okay. you know, where they're at. But the Got book it. will be like, hey, I don't have any parts. I don't you know, there's no place for this card to sit. So I'll go back in the book and then. Got like, it. Yeah. Got it. So that's I get a, I got a question of that on that one. One of my vlogs. What are those cards from? And <laughs> I think it's Ask Pops Block Shop number six video. I think it's in there. I just put that link in there, and you know, um, so any it was great when I did those videos. Anytime I'd get a question a lot, I start writing it down, and then I get five or six questions. I'm like, okay, enough for a video. And I haven't I haven't seemed to have to do that lately. And I mean, maybe it's just my priorities. I don't really want to make another one because I don't see I don't. I don't have the, um, cause we I have, feel we like have that's, this. I feel like that's died, right? Like, I think that, yeah. was, that that came from like bricks on a dollar and he had that ass clutch series, which was like 300 yeah. up 300 videos. And like when he t pulled those down, there was other bricklink YouTubers that were doing those kind of, you were doing it just brick and buck was doing it. I don't see that anymore. Right. Like you, that, that sort of died. There's down. so much information right now. Yeah. But but there's also a finite amount of information, right? Like right. there's only so many times you can ask the same question and answer, <laughs> right? Like yep, yeah. I, th that that to me is like the, the crux of being a, a Bricklink YouTuber. It's like there's only so much information you can learn, right? And like there's right. your way of of doing things that you can show how you do that. That ends after a while, right? <laughs> um like even you say like you know you feel like you're just repeating the same things you're, you're yeah. talking about over and over again like uh, like but i think people just like watching it right like it's it's a good yeah. motivator that kind of thing and i think that's the niche that you found in your your yeah. youtube channel so and one thing about you're talking about selling full-time and you're talking about ebay you got to diversify i mean if i were only doing one of the three i'm doing three things right yeah, I guess Bricklink and Brick Owl, I, I combine into one thing because they're the same inventory, but the eBay, the Bricklink, Brick Owl, and then doing uh, on, on site sales or Lego conventions. Like, I'd be okay if I didn't do one of those. If I just did two, I'd still be all right. But if I only did just one of, yeah. of those three, it, it would be, a, I think it'd be a struggle. You'd, I would probably figure it out in the end. Um, I mean, I couldn't imagine doing like, I guess. I could probably live off of doing one convention a month if I really tried, uh, yeah. but you know, you just can't just start out and do that, but the diversifying and that I've talked about this before in these other episodes, but it's very important. It's like, you know, if, and it's funny cause I get some people that, you know, like this Dr. Bricks on eBay, he, he, he deleted his, his, uh, his Bricklink store. He's, he's, he's the one I buy a lot of stuff from that he doesn't want to deal with. Uh, but anyway, um, he's only on eBay now and he's just like, yeah. so I just want to do eBay and eBay. And I'm like, I feel like there is a limit to eBay. Like you can't just keep putting the same figure over and over. Like, yeah, oh, I have 10 of this figure. I mean, and you're, you're just going to hit a limit. You're it's, 
I don't know if you're just selling Lego, it's tough to, to, to make it huge uh, in that sense. That's why I, I, I want to have the brick link and brick all, I want to have the conventions, but when I'm done shipping, um, you know, five hundred dollars worth of stuff on eBay within ninety minutes or less, yeah. and then I'm looking at Bricklink has three hundred dollars and it's going to take me two and a half hours. I'm like, yeah, I wish I didn't That's... have to do the second part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's just what it is, but I don't yeah, know. I I agree with that. Like, you know, the last month uh, it was the first month like eBay really took off for me, and it was it was very eye opening to see that. Um, the revenue I was pulling in from eBay, it was almost matching BrickLink, but it took like yeah. a fraction of the amount of time to do. Um, yeah, I, I see why you you do it, right? Like, and uh, I, I'm kicking myself for waiting so long to, to, to jump in it. But like, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about finances a little bit um, because yeah. that's that to me is like a, bit, a big thing, right? Like Brick Arena talked about, he had a really great, video a couple months ago talking about his being full-time for a year and to be honest i didn't even know he was full-time because i yeah, missed the i missed i missed the first step first video where he said all the things that you know led up to him being um full-time and the struggles he was having right and one of the struggles that he was having was he had a really good salary from his previous job and so like yeah he would never never have entertained going full-time unless those circumstances happened to him. I'm probably in the same boat, right? Like I'm never going to replace my, my salary, right. you know, with, with this, it's just not going to, I'm not going to replace my benefits with this. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing holding me at my day job is the benefit. Yeah. Let's, let's get real. Right. Like I think right. I can make the money. It's the benefits. Um, uh, so, so that's, that's a key thing, right? Like, how do you know, like, how did you know you were ready financially to, to take that step? And I think we've talked about this, right? I think that's a key yeah. thing. Like where, when do you think you're ready to, to go full time? Is it an abrupt, you know, end of, end of employment or is it, what was the, in your case, you were like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to quit my job and, and do this. What was, what was that caveat? Well, I mean, I guess it's the seeing the the income and the sales and the profit gains or whatever the cash flow in and out. Um, I mean, this year, uh, compared to my salary at my other job, I'm going to be doubling that in, in income. So it's that was that was the decision. I'm like, well, we can pay for our own health insurance, we can pay for dental insurance, and get get our own life insurance and all this stuff. So obviously, money is the biggest factor. Um, to know if you can do it by seeing it and, and recording it. So just keeping track of your expenses, you know, like you said, you know, it's eye-opening sometimes when you see, um, cause I mean, I have to use all my profits to live off of. Right. So it's, it's not always, it's, you think like, oh, I sold this for a whole bunch. I got all these sales this week. Like, well, we got to pay, pay this right. and this. All right. Um, you know, and the goal is to become completely debt-free. Um, that was the original goal is to pay off our house before I quit. And then it kind of went away. <laughs> um, and we should, I'm hoping by the end of next year, we're completely debt-free. The business mm -hmm. is debt-free. Um, I don't know if you can say that because I'm working on the house that we owe on, but <laughs> right. um, yeah. other than that, I mean, everything down here is paid for. I don't recommend going into debt, doing something like this um, because you, you know, this is the statistics on small businesses that fail. And I think this is more brick and mortar store type businesses because th that has a lot more expenses than doing something out of your home. Right. Yeah. So that is something to consider. I, a dream is to have a brick and mortar store, but I don't like having the, um, the time obligation. I got to have something open. You know, I want to work on my schedule. And if, if we build this building that we probably will, um, I want to have a few days a week that people can come in, not a week, but a month, a few days in a month where people come in and trade and have a little storefront set up inside of there. Uh, just to offer that, to have that, I know that can, is a possibility. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's just figuring it out with finances. You got to keep good records. Definitely. You don't want to pay too many more taxes than you have to. So definitely keep track of all your expenses. Definitely. Well, one more thing on that. It's funny. Cause I, there's a store owner in Indianapolis that I talked to at brick world and, you know, and I was like, and I asked questions like, Oh yeah, storefront. And I'm like, do you get a lot of stuff in? He's like, uh, wide eyed look at me like uh yeah <laughs> like some you know one person walked in with his his dad's collection um or was in his van and he's like 
the guy knew it was worth 35,000. was like, I'll pay you 5,000 for it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> You're like, it's wow. insane to think that that stuff happens and probably pretty regularly around the, around the United States, you know, or at, around the world, really, because people just accumulate so much. And then all of a sudden they're gone and the, the kids are left or someone's left with like, what do we do with it? Let's talk about uh, just going back to the finances real quick. Cause I think that's a, that's another key point, right? Like you, you were, as you were talking about, um, you know, living off the profits, one of the things that comes to mind for me is like, I'm at a point where like to grow my store, it takes all of the capital that, that comes into yes. my store, right? Like it takes a lot of capital and like, even in your sales, uh, store recap videos, you, you see that you're spending oh. a lot of, a lot of, a lot per month, but you're right. You're at this point where you're also getting a lot back per month, um, so that you can live off of that. I'm getting not a lot per month and I'm spending, it feels like I'm spending yeah, a lot for a lot per month. Right. And I'm like, sort of like spinning my wheels, like just sort of, uh, doing the work and not getting, getting much out of it. So th there, you know, there's, you, you talk about having the capital on hand. Um, and yes, that's a big, you know, you need to have that capital on hand plus you need to figure out what your salary you want to pay yourself, plus how much you need to have on capital on hand. I think I talked about this on Brickslingers last last week when I was on with uh, Brickslayer and uh, AZ Clicky Bricks. We were talking about, yeah. um, you know, AZ, Click, AZ Clicky Bricks is uh, full time and he's like wavering right now, right? Like he's, he's not sure uh, whether or not he wants to continue doing this. And, you know, it's hard, right? right? Like I think he's determined that he needs to go back into the workforce but yeah you know you gotta spend a lot of time spend a lot of money and what's the return at the end there so right and I, I, was, I was i was running by some stuff of my from, with my wife before this like what do you think about selling full-time what, what are some things like why do why does it work for me and mm -hmm. she's like it's personality like you just are a person that go 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 like if, if i'm not down here doing stuff and i'm just doing it upstairs i'm always running around the outside um you know shooting yeah. baskets i cannot sit still yeah I don't even, like i said i i used to drink caffeine i've been off it since july 1st so um you know and i you know i don't i don't say that's a guarantee but <laughs> i was even just even more than that and i feel like i'm back to she asked me all the time are you, are you drinking caffeine again <laughs> i'm like no <laughs> you know, it's just me i'm but just euphoric yeah. <laughs> you got to have that drive and uh, it's, it's a lot of work. And I, you know, I get about six and a half hours of sleep on a good night and I'm okay with that. If I get six hours, I'm a little bit slower, but six and a half to seven, some days on Sunday mornings, I sleep about probably seven and a half. I'm just up at five 30 or six, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that yeah. to me is like, I'm envious of that. You being able to like jump. Uh, what, what's your typical time going to bed? Uh, I'm usually asleep in no later than 10 30. Okay. Um, okay. More to, between 10 and 10, 10 30. Yeah. Something, something like that. I think the earliest I go to bed is like 11 30. And it's like, yeah, that, that to me is like crazy early. Um, yeah. But my, my, my wife has always been a night owl and she's made me a night owl. And, and it's yeah. like, I can get up easily with a, with an alarm clock. She can't, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, um, if I wanted to force myself, it's the, the hard part would be going to bed at a reasonable time, you know? Um, cause yeah. I always feel like I, I should wait for her to go to bed. Don't, don't make excuses. Um, you know, make sure you answer questions or resolve problems in a timely manner. Oh, yeah. There's no reason that you shouldn't be able to, because you, you know, unless you're not seeing them, obviously sometimes you just don't see them, but if you have notifications on your phone, you got it. Um, you know, it's just one of those things and, and you're building, it's your reputation too, right? Don't, don't sell junk parts and then pretend that they're good and say, no, that's, that's your problem. Like just resolve the problems and yeah, just take responsibility like, and no excuses. It's like, we've done a whole episode on this. I know <laughs> I, I got an email yesterday. It was like, this is the entire, the entire contents of the email. I unfortunately didn't receive all the parts that I ordered. <laughs> end of message i'm like i can't i can't help you like 
I replied back. I'm like, <laughs> I'd be glad to help you and send these parts out. All I need is a list. Yeah. I haven't heard back from them. It's like crazy <laughs> to me. That to me is somebody that was wants to leave bad feedback. Like neutral yeah, I'm expecting. I'm expecting it. I keep going back to my Brickling page. Going, you know, <laughs> Nathan. Nathan called it uh, popping the cherry of your uh, negative feedback score. So I'm expecting that yeah. to happen. Did you? Uh, did you? I, I saw that. I, I was out watching the. Um, Brick Slingers when he mentioned he got his first feedback. So I checked out the seller. He's on my, he was on my block list already. That's oh, he was a, uh, he's an actual big seller. And in his feedback, he's like, somebody replied to the negative feedback that that guy left him as well. Like this person is toxic. He's left like 300 negative feedbacks for other sellers. Like it's insane that you think that there are sellers out there that do that. Like they, they know how hard it is. It's not an easy thing. And you mistakes happen a lot. And they're leaving over 300 negative feedbacks for other sellers. And they're, they're like, he's got like 10,000 sales or orders or something like that. I'm like, those type of people should not be allowed on the site. Honestly, it's just make giving Bricklink a terrible name. I'm checking you right know. now. I've given five negative feedbacks the whole time. And I think probably four or five of them have been customers that never paid. Um, or, and then there were, I think I've only given one to a seller that just, I gave, one to a seller this 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 year like last month mm. you saw that in the blogs because they were just ridiculous right and um and then i gave i gave a neutral one the, the other day too because they 30 days went by they didn't ship the order and i said well, can i get the tracking and they didn't respond to that message so i sent them another one seven days later where's the tracking where's the package I'm like oh sorry we never were able to ship it out here's a refund like what yeah, they just... didn't respond to my message after se seven days originally. I, I sent them a message 21 days after I placed the order because I'm like, why is this at the bottom of my list? I didn't get it yet. It's in, Amer it's in America here, United States. And yeah, so I'm like, that deserves a neutral feedback because that's something that needs to be addressed. <laughs> I, I wonder if, I wonder if they like had a, they have a lot just... of bad feedback actually. They're, oh, okay. they're, it's like another like 92%. So Eesh. I didn't feel yeah. bad about leaving it. <laughs> I think I think the one other thing I'd like to touch on with um, going full time that I I I felt um, you know I I work all day in front of the computer so it's very very poor health let's just put it that way yeah uh, working when I started the first couple of weeks I was sore like my back hurt you know right. like my shoulders hurt um, my <clears throat> I would wake up and my legs would be screaming at me and going, not again. No, <laughs> not another day. But uh, towards the end of it, like I, I actually enjoyed it. Right. Like yeah. I was, I was in coming back to work and sitting back down in this chair again for as many hours a day. I hated it. I really hate it. I really wanted to just be down running around, you know? And I think that's also another thing that, um, you know, full, like one of the benefits of being full-time, you know, it's, you're like, you're at the mercy of your own destiny, right? Like you, right. you can, you control your own destiny of what you're going to do. And it's more satisfying. Um, you know, like when I, when I was in the middle of it, there was a week where it, the orders were dry. Right. And I was yep. like, I was like regretting like doing this. <laughs> right. And then I went, I went back to work and like the orders exploded. I'm like going, this is reversed. Like, this is not how I wanted it to happen. <laughs> But like, it took a month of real work for me to see enough orders and it became very satisfying, right? Like it's starting to slow down again now because I'm not working on it as much. But like, if I were to keep up that level of, of work and see the return I was getting after I went back to work, right? you know, like it was so satisfying to see that. Like I could, I could almost like if I could double that or even triple that amount that was coming in, I would almost consider like going full-time at that. Like it was that level of, of good. Yeah. Uh, although I think I would have needed another level above that just to pay for the, the, more, right. yeah, the more, more stuff that came in. Yeah. But like it would have been at a level where I think I would have said, started to really consider it, you know? And then there was a sales explosion, probably because of that uh, estimated child's tax, child tax credit checks that go out on the 15th of every month. So that's when you probably got that sales boom. That's when I got a huge sales boom. So you just got to be like, just knowing that's happening. 
and you'll see it. It'll just happen. When I was working and I get, I got paid every, you know, biweekly every two weeks. And I was at a, you know, a corporate job, United Healthcare there. And I'm sure most corporate companies got on that same weekend pay schedule. Those weekends would always be big sales, like bigger than the weekend before, because it's people. And then, you know, usually like the very end of the month uh, weekend was like slower because people had to pay their rent and mortgage, you know? So yeah. Yeah. you just kind of see these trends and, and you just, I don't know, you just kind of know when they're going to come and not going to come. You figure it out like that. You know, the other thing that was helpful to me too is um, uh, I started whining and crying to you on, on Instagram about, you know, how bad the week was and why, yeah. why, why, you know, you gave me some really good advice, right? Like I'm, I'm already doing a 20% say I'm sort of, I stole your idea of like, you know, put on a sale or like up price and always have a sale on. But right. what I, what, it, what you like sort of suggested to me, it was like dial the sale to what you want right? Like you want more, you want more orders coming in, maybe dial the sale up five, five percent, you know? And so yep. I dialed it up to like 25% and the order started coming. It like opened the floodgate and I'm like, okay, this is too much. And I dialed <laughs> it back to like 23%. Yep. Right. And it was like, it's cool. Right. Like that, that's like a little knob to say, okay, I'm ready for more orders. And so like I yep. bump it up on <laughs> Thursday night to like get more orders on the weekend kind of thing. So, yep. I, it, I, it's cool little bit of advice there. I, th I thought it was yeah, cool. I figured that out. Yeah. Working, you know, managing my time, I had to figure something out. And that's why I do eBay. The weekend sales are more because mm -hmm. I have more time on the, on, I, we used to pack orders on Sunday actually for, for eBay and we stopped doing that, but yeah, that's how I figured that. And one of the things, yeah, just you get back, whatever you put into this, you know, that's, yeah. that's the best you could, you could, you could have that slogan down anywhere in your room, wherever you're working, you get back, whatever you put into it. You know, if you're uploading a ton, you're going to get it back, you know, things like that. You're up, you know, sending orders out fast. You're going to get repeat customers. So you can put that onto anything during, to, you know, with this and it's just good piece of advice. I think that's a show. I think that's where we should, we should end that. We get back what you put into it. What do you think? Yeah, that was great. All right, man. Awesome show. Well, um, good luck with, uh, your shows. Actually, uh, you and I were talking about potentially me joining you one weekend to help you out. Do it. I, <laughs> I think it would be cool to, to actually see you and actually see what's involved in running that kind of stuff and just, you know, helping you out and so have all a, that. brick separators and action video out. <laughs> maybe we do a brick separators live, you know, maybe <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah. so good luck if you're in, uh, uh, Michigan, uh, Brick World, Michigan, or Brick World, Indianapolis, or Brick World, what is it, Fort Worth? Fort Wayne. Fort, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yep. Fort Wayne, Just go Indiana. to brickworld.com or, or go to my website, popswalkshop.com. I have all the all the dates and places. And then there's Milwaukee. I have, so we'll have a two week break after Fort Wayne, and I'm going to Milwaukee. So I have four in a six week span, which is just. Wow mind-blowing to me, but <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> and, and you said you were, you're not. Uh, you're not um, closing the story. You're closing the story. You're not going to keep it. It'll be store. closed for um, September 23rd through October 11th. So with no passcode. You nope, said, yeah, right? you can't order. So yeah, cool. Uh, one last thing before we, uh, we, we depart. I wanted to, uh, Derek and I were, were talking about how much to, to actually read of this, this email. But last month I got one of the biggest orders uh, in my store. Uh, uh, money wise and i thought it was great and i let the let the person know it was great um in within the order and i got an email from from him um and it was very touching and i haven't replied to the email it's very hard to know what to say in this email um and let, let, let me summarize it. i don't want to read the whole thing it's very long and it's very personal yeah but basically um uh this viewer has been going through some um, some health problems um, and life-threatening health problems. Um, he's on uh, dialysis three days a week. Um, doesn't you know? Came to a point in his life where uh, didn't feel like he wanted to go on. He was talking to his wife and family and doctors about just stopping all of that. Uh, doctors gave him some great advice of find a hobby and. Um, my dog's barking and uh he found youtube videos and 
came into the Lego hobby. Um, and he came to us and said that he very much enjoyed the brick separators. Um, and he's or he ordered from me, he ordered from you uh, yep. a couple of times, uh, big orders too. Yep. And he said, uh, Legos completely changed his life and given him hope and passion. Um, and he wanted to say thank you to me and pops for uh, basically saving his life. And I thought that was uh, very, I, I'm honored by the fact that this yeah. little show that we do about selling bricks uh, to people had this kind of effect on somebody. I, I was not prepared for that email that came in. I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. Um, yeah. And I, 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 I talked about, you know, I showed the, the order on um, a vlog and I got a comment from the guy on, on the vlog and I just have not replied to this email. And I, I, I wanted to save it for this and just say to the, to the person, uh, Chris, you know who you are. Um, I'm honored. We are honored by uh, your email and we're honored that we are affecting your life and give you hope. And we hope in passion and we hope that this continues um you know life is worth living and uh you know Definitely. for your for, for yourself for your family and your wife um we hope you continue and we hope that uh you get the uh you get the needed uh kidney that 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 you're that you're looking for and uh just keep keep commenting on our videos you don't need yeah. to you don't need to order but we would love your orders but uh mm -hmm. you know keep commenting on the videos let us know what you're doing We'd love to see, you know, uh, the other, the other thing, the real, the thing that really touched me, touched me was, uh, he said a six-year-old sweet, uh, Yorkshire terrier passed away unexpectedly. Mm. And I know from, from my expect, my experience with my dog, like if that happened to me, yeah. you wouldn't see me on YouTube anymore. Uh, but <laughs> he was making a memorial for her grave and that's what the orders are for. We would love to see the see that memorial when you finish it. We would, I would, yeah. gladly feature it on our on our show or our channels uh, in some way. So, keep on living, keep on building Lego, keep looking to us for inspiration and and uh, hope, and uh, we hope things go go well for you. Amen, Ralph. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and, and thank you for the email. And I'm sorry I didn't reply to you. Um, I hope this is making up for for that reply believe me for the last month i've been thinking about this email and uh it's really affected yeah. me and i hope uh i hope it continues give it, these videos continue giving you hope and passion <laughs>